Hello my soccer universe. Uh, I would say let's review Europa League qualifying and also look at the Europa League draw and the jersey give gives away Lusk was in this qualifying and in the draw so this will be mostly from the Lusk perspective which is a very very happy slight sour taste because while it was great to qualify qualifying went not this smooth but you were also kissed by for the Lady Fortuna with all the draws we gotta see. Uh, uh, I'm also happy that the two Prague teams and Ajax Quark qualified uh, you know, from the collection point of view. In order to fill out the background a little bit, I decided to add a few of the jerseys of teams that have qualified but uh, came down from Champions League qualifying, not playing in Europa League qualifying. The Europa League qualifying is actually the shortest one because it already starts in round three and for this round three I made community posts that you can look up the results there. I'm not going to mention much there. Uh, the only thing I really want to well, want to mention uh, that Lusk then for the playoffs, as I said already, they had so much luck in getting the win of Sorinsky against Breda Blick because they could have gotten initially uh, teams of the kind of uh, Olympiakos, potentially Ludogorets or something like that. Uh, uh, some uh, Union Saint Gigiloas, really, really tough opponents. They avoided that and then they stayed in the, in the draw and got probably the sweetest draw possible. Because I think against any other opponent, they would not have qualified for the Europa League. But I would say we look over the results of the playoffs. We have um, the first one here, Karabag against Olympia Ljubljana. Expectedly, I would say Karabag. Aris Limassol coming from Champions League qualifying, of course, like Karabag. Uh, completely steamrolling slow one in the return leg, where the first leg was actually going slow one, slow one's way. It was not a good qualifying campaign uh, for Ukrainian teams, amongst others. Slavia Prague then eliminates uh, Zoria on ag ag aggregate, having already a 2 0 lead uh, from the home, home, home game. It got a little bit tight, but in the end, Slavia made it through. The big story, of course, was Klaxwick uh, from Champions League qualifying. They didn't make it into Europa League, getting, getting beaten by Sheriff, but only by uh, a smidgen. And then another big comeback for Sparta Prague against Dinamo Zagreb. Uh, Zagreb had a 3-1 lead and Dinamo Zagreb. Both teams came down from Champions League qualifying, um, having been eliminated in the th uh, third round there. Meeting in what I think was probably the marquee matchup in that round. Um, and yeah, it was 4-1 uh, Sparta Prague came, came, came back, which actually I was happy to have it this way again, mostly for uh, collection purposes. Ajax steamrolling Ludogorets away from home, losing then at, at home, but if Ajax would not have, have, have qualified, something had been seriously wrong. Uh, also Olympiakos got a relatively sweet draw with Chucha Ricci from Serbs, uh, Serbia, I think they were the vice champ champions of Serbs in Serbia, uh, also from Belgrade. Union City San Giudas, relatively easy over Lugano. Hecken, I was surprised that they got an away win then to oust Aberdeen from Scotland. I expected this probably the other way around. And what can I tell you about Lask against Mostar? The uh, home leg, after 15 minutes, it looked like this will be a cakewalk. Robert Schulz scoring two goals, easy turn to lead, uh, every shot a goal. Uh, and uh, Zarinski definitely on the back foot. However, for some reason, they let go of the control. And there was a pretty big chance for Zarinski to pull one back uh, where they had an open net, nice move, open net. They hit the inside of the, of the post, second half. I think Lars controlled the game a little bit more. Didn't let uh, in a, a lot of chance, but didn't create as many as well. And then Srinsky uh, from a dead ball situation, Biblia, their big striker, uh, pulls one back and it got really, really tight. And I think the mood, despite the win, was overall kind of meh, yeah, got the win, but... And it didn't, uh, and I didn't see much of the return leg because, you know, traveling. But uh, Srinsky, Got a goal, got the e equalizer through a um, Biblia penalty. I think the penalty call was a little bit rough because uh, goalie Laval placed the ball, but he also goes in, in, in the player. So I can't see why it's given, but I was not really, really happy with that penalty, to be honest. Of course, fortunately, um, uh, Jovicic with a wide range shot that goes via the inside of the post, and it's the inside of, of the post that makes a difference here. It goes in. Kind of settling the game in a way, Lask having large controls, Lask of course playing in pink jerseys, why? Um, 
settling the game, controlling it, however, giving up wo again one crucially big chance that Bibliac just cannot connect to wide open net. Lusk is through. Uh, actually, at the end, I had the feeling that both teams kind of said, okay, it's all right. We're both happy where we're going, because Slavinsk is the first Bosnian team to actually qualify for European group stage. Now, after the game, uh, Captain Robert Schul, the one who scored two goals in the first leg, uh, was in the, in, the, in the interview and said, yeah, we're happy to make it through. It wasn't a main, no, no pretty, but it was more important to get the job done. And now I know we cannot, it's not something where you can wish for much in the, in the draw, but now we really want to play Liverpool. So that was basically the scene there. Um, going into the draw, as I said, I was only looking at Lusk uh, because uh, it was just a blur going going on. I was sorry that Lusk could make it into the second pot, which I think is pretty amazing. Yes, it's all down to the great season 1920, especially then 2021, 20, where you got 10 points and got eliminated, and then the great run in the Con -Con conference in 21, 22. So Lusk had, a, had many points and were better than uh, Sturm Graz there, which I thought was really, really cool to see that clearly weakest team from pot two but it meant that you could get a really nice opponent from pot one because any of these maybe with the exception of Villarreal and Leverkusen Le Le that would not have been sick but any of these I would have really liked probably most people here in Linz would not also have enjoyed Atalanta but the Serie A fan I would have and then you were hoping for a decent draw that maybe you can get a third place uh, out of there although if you get something attractive everyone would have liked that too Again, quick background change, and as always, Europa League feels always very red, whereas Champions League feels always very blue with my jersey. It's also this year, so. But for the draw, please let me le set the scene for you how I experienced the draw, because uh, again, we were traveling and uh, we arrived in Vienna, but we were uh, driving to Linz, and halfway we said we need to have some lunch, and the kids wanted to go to McDonald's, so halfway point. We checked McDonald's and I thought, yeah, the draw probably has already happened. No, I was wrong. The draw was happening as I ordered and as we had the meal. And I decided, okay, let's pull the poop it up. And what's even more funny is that I saw it's halfway through with the groups. And the first ball being drawn that I saw was Lusk. At that point, I had not realized against whom Lusk, Lusk was playing. You know, it's the kind of camera kind of and I see have my wife walk, 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 uh, watching as, as well and you know my eyesight at the moment is not that, that, that great in having the glass on. I guess who was last night? She says Liverpool. Liverpool? <laughs> really? And I was so happy. And literally everyone in Linz wanted that Lusk play against Liverpool. And to me, and we see here uh, the draw happen at uh, the group stage, as draw, uh, Lusk is in group E with Liverpool. To me, this is just such a mind F. It, it doesn't compute. To me, Lusk and Liverpool should not play on the same field. Because for me, yes, Lusk have been so successful over the last few years. But most of the time, Lusk have been a pretty crappy Austrian team. And now, having the chance to play in the new stadium against Liverpool, amazing. And all of Linz, and we talk about the groups a little bit, all of Linz is going nuts for that. Just this pure fact, and I'm not talking about the other two opponents yet. Just the pure fact that they drew Liverpool. Everyone wants to see, see, see this game. If you have a season ticket, you have the advantage because you get the pre you get uh, in the pre-sale. You have the chance to get tickets there. Lusk sold 4,000 season tickets just based on that. That's almost a fifth of the stadium capacity. And that doesn't even include the tickets for the, for, for, for the Liverpool game. Just have that in mind. It's absolutely nuts what's going on here. Absolutely nuts. And... Everyone knows that they're gonna get beaten by Liverpool, but just the fact that Liverpool is coming to Linz is already a big thing. The other two opponents are also rather tough. I mean, this is not a group where Lusk will finish in any not even third. I mean, I, Union saint Lars is a Belgian team, and in all the European adventures, they always played against an English team, got handily beaten, United Tottenham, always played against a Belgian team. Yes, they got the win in and enter, but other than that, it was always rather, rather tight. But in the end, they lost Union and saint -Juelas. They will not do well. And I also think that Toulouse will be a better team than Las Cava. It's a very attractive group I had to have, to have to say. In addition, uh, all three opponents, I think that Union and saint -Juelas has a similar story as Lusk did just about um, four years ago. Um, 
a giant kind of reborn uh, in, in a way. Definitely one of the most in interesting teams. But then I have a personal story. I mean, you know my buddy Matt. He's a Liverpool fan. And my buddy Idris is not living far away from Toulouse. Unfortunately, I will probably not be able to travel. I'm still contemplating to getting the tickets because this will be quite some expense and I'm not sure if it's worth it. However, we already saw scheduling all the games are played at reasonable times. So maybe, maybe, maybe tell a little later, later about that. But um, when we look now over the groups, last aside, uh, overall, I think Group B sticks out like a sore thumb. This is what Group F is in the, in the Champions League. There's Ajax, there's Mercedes, there's Brighton, there's Ike. In, in the, those are four really, really strong teams. I probably a little bit le uh, step a, a, a step below. So this to me is a really really tough group. I also think that the uh, group of Sturm Graz is not one to be this uh, missed. I also said it in my short short video. Sturm Graz against Sporting. Sporting is kind of Austria's favorite Portuguese team because they always do well. So I want to see what they can do. When I look at Roma. Uh, probably my other favorite team, team in there. They have a, um, a relatively soft draw. One has to say as to Leverkusen in, in a way. I think also Vira Start, Ren, Panathinaikos, Maccabi, Haifa. Uh, interesting groups. I would say let, 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 let's look at, at, at the overall impact of, of the draw with the bars. Red bars mean neg negative impact. You see all of Group B is negative. Lusk also very, very neg negative. Of course, because I mean, you could have gotten easy opponents from especially pots three and four. I mean, at this moment, everyone is excited, although I think overall for the Austrian club coefficient, this is not a good draw. Um, here, this will be a very good draw for Lusk. Um, if you look at the Group A, Freiburg is rather happy having Olympiakos and Bacca Topola in there. Uh, as I said, uh, Roma and Bayer Leverkusen all really, really, really happy. And then a few tighter groups. When we look at the favorites, it is Liverpool, Brighton. I need a Brighton jersey, Roma, West Ham, uh, and Leverkusen, I think. And then maybe the two Spanish teams, Villarreal and Betis, have a say in, 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 in the interim moment. You also see some Champions League teams already popping in. Of course they do, because uh, they have such a higher ra rating as compared to the likes of, let's say, Freiburg, Im Ajax, or Rennes, and so on, that if they would go in, they immediately go in, in, in into favorites. And you also see there's some teams in there that did not have such a happy draw to get into the Europa League playoff that, yeah, they have a good chance of actually going far as well. But I would say up until Betis, potentially Atalanta, those are the ones realistically. And as of late, it has been teams from the Europa League that have won the Europa League, and that is fun. How did your team fare in the Europa League? If you had one, let me know what you thought about the qualifiers and the draw itself. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.